Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Now we uh, propose one more parameter, this will constitute the residues which have more number of contacts. For example, if there are many clusters, right, one residue is forming many long range contacts. So, then see in your protein how many clusters you can find right, based on long range contacts and there are more clusters are formed by the long range contacts, then these proteins take time to fold. Under this assumption, we see the residues which can have more number of contacts. For example, take this as an example, how many contacts? 4 contacts right here only 4. So, if you take this one 8 contacts, if you this one 11 contacts, this is for the residue T1. For example, a protein, one case only 5 residues have this multiple contacts, one protein they have 20 residues which have multiple contacts which will uh, fast uh, fold fast which will fold slow right one with only 5 residues they are having multiple contacts another one 20 residues have the multiple contacts which one will fold fast the 5 one will fold fast because only with the 5 one they have to get more number of contacts in this case all the 25 different residues they are making the contacts from different residues so it takes time to get all the uh, in, uh, contacts so here is one example so, we have the different classifications alpha, beta mixed and the fast and slow folding proteins. So, here this is the percentage of residues which have multiple contacts. So, if you see the fast and slow folding proteins the, with the, uh, at least the, with the uh, condition of 5 residues, if you see in here we see the clusters only if the uh, residue contains more than 5 long range contacts. If you do so, the fast folding proteins there are only 12.6. And the slow folding proteins you can see the 22.6 uh, percentage of the residues they are present in the case of slow folding proteins. This will tell you that the proteins with the more number of the multiple contact residues are slowing down the folding process. Then I show another example if we take the fastest that means ln k is more than 9 and the slowest this is less than 0. Now we have 8 uh, exam examples for the fastest and 7 for the slowest. So, here you see only 6 percent in the fastest and more than 25 percent in the case of the slowest proteins. This will clearly tell you the proteins right which are containing more number of residues with multiple contacts right they are slow folders. Here we did with the 41 fast and 28 slow proteins here the fastest and slowest you can see the difference between the percentage of residues with the uh, multiple contacts. So, based on this information we can derive a parameter just we can relate the folding rate with the because we need to quantify right here this will tell you some numbers how many residues which you have with threshold of more than 5 contacts in the here we give the more than 10 we can change this number then also in this case we need to quantify. So, based on that there is another parameter called the multiple contact index have been developed right. So, here they take distance between residues this already used in the previous uh, methods right for example, contact order long range order and the second one is sequence separation this was done earlier. Now, here in addition to that we added one more feature what is this feature? Number of residues. Right, residues with multiple contacts okay, for example, if you see this figure here the how many this you take the T 1 how many long range contact this can form? 1, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5 right. So, in this case n c i equal to 5. If this is the case then you can you can define n m i equal to 1 because if it is more than 4 or 5 you can put any cutoff right and if this is the case m c i you can calculate sigma n m i by n for all the protein and get the number. Now, see whether this has any influence in the folding rates compared with long range order and the contact order right. Here we have different data sets right 2 set proteins and 3 set condition 3 set proteins right. So, these are data you can see this is a 2 set proteins right 50 proteins contact order is 0 0.6 long range order is 1 3 this is TCD is a total contact distance that is the multiplication of CO and LRO right. So, here is also 0 0.73 and 
and M C i is 0 0.8 because this will this information will enhance the correlation between the M C i and the folding rates. So, now we try to see whether this is correct or not how far the, we, this can be trusted. So, we set another 27 two set proteins same experimental conditions in the beginning of the lecture I dis discussed about the data determined by the different experimental groups the same conditions. So, for that if you do that well, there also we get about the similar correlation minus 0 0.81 that means, M C i is a good measure to, uh, to relate protein folding rates. Then we use the same with the three set proteins here also we could get the same correlation of 0 0.83. So, then this, this can be a, a good uh, measure for predicting or relating the folding rates. Then we need to compare the two state and three state proteins there is one important information between two state and three state proteins. The two state proteins we need to normalize with the n for example, the long range order. So, what is long equation for long range order n i j by n, but the case of three state protein right if you normalize the values is very less, but if you do not normalize then this is 0 0.83. Still it is very clear why this normalization is very important for the two state proteins and it is not uh, required for the case of the three state proteins. Three state proteins if you normalize the values are very less, two state proteins if you do not normalize the values are very less. So, it is very important to normalize uh, the two set proteins right the to get the folding rates with better performance. So, till now we discussed about the different uh, features contact order, long range order as well as the multiple contact index. Now, if you see whether any difference in the folding rate and the number and the fast folding proteins and the slow folding proteins based on the number of contacts. Here if you see the x axis the number of contacts y axis the percentage of residues right. So, the percentage up to the 7 residues right, for example, up to here. So, see this higher in the fast folding proteins after that it is higher in the case of slow folding proteins. The same in the case of 20 and 2 set proteins and the 3 set, pro, uh, three set proteins as well as another set of 52 set proteins. That means, if you take the slow folding proteins right these proteins have more contacts than the fast folding protein because if you see the slow folding proteins values are very high compared with the fast folding proteins right that is this see we can see the relationship between the slow folders, fast folders and the contacts right they can have a picture regard related with all these parameters ok. These are all we did with the completely with 3D structures. Now, is it possible to get this information from the sequence because topological parameters contact order, long range order, multiple contact index we have need, need, need a structure. It also depends upon the type of the protein alpha, beta, mixed class proteins right. Can we predict or can we relate the sequence based parameters with the folding rates. Last class we discussed about the stability right. So, how many properties we used last time which type of properties physical, chemical, energetic and conformance properties right. We discussed about all the properties they are available on the web right the original values are there. So, how can we relate these properties with the folding rate. Right, there are various aspects to predict the folding rate from the sequence. Either we get the sequence based parameters, right? What are sequence based parameters we discussed in the earlier classes? Amenous composition, occurrence, average property values, conservation, right, hydrophobic profiles, right? So, we can see if we have many properties, you can see the average property values. If we take a full protein, right, you can get the average property values. How to get the average property values? Calculate total divided by like normalized with the chain length. So, then we see whether it can be related with the folding rate or you can do because contact order and long range order are based on contacts. If one or your program can predict the contacts, then we can use their contacts to predict the folding rate, right? That is also possible. Or we have to model the structures and then we have to use the structures to get the contacts because we uh, long range order depends upon which type, which atom C alpha atom. So, we crude model is enough we do not need the refined model. So, then we can calculate the LRO and, and we can predict the folding rate right, with the various ways. So, let us see whether any specific property right can relate to the folding rate right. So, in this case first we calculate the average value right. For example, if you take the hydrophobicity how to calculate the average hydrophobicity here we take the hydrophobicity of values all the residues 
right j equal to 1 to n right j equal to 1 to n where is n n is the number of residues in a protein right so okay can put here so the normalize with the n then we will get the for any protein i we will get the average value so we have the for example we have the 100 proteins for all the 100 proteins, we can calculate the average property, right? You can give the average property here. So, here P average. So, here we have the ln kf. Now, we relate how to relate these two using correlation coefficient. You get the correlation coefficient, right? Then see whether any correlation between the average property value as well as the folding rate. So, this is the data. So, we used various properties right physical properties, chemical properties, confirmation properties, energetic properties and these are the properties which showed the highest one the values are very less that is only 0 0.38 that means any single property they cannot relate the folding rate right that is also correct that is fine because if your single property can do it right then there is no use of this topological parameters and so on. Then we try to a secondary structure right, what are different secondary structures alpha releases beta strand and the coil turns right you can see the contents uh, how many residues or the percentage of residues in alpha helix or the beta strand or the coil right or uh, helices and strands. So, we if you compare all this uh, secondary structure information we can get up to 0 0.52 and then we use thermal accessibility right either you can predict the thermal accessibility from sequence or you can use this exact data right. So, the what are different uh, locations based on thermal accessibility? Exposed, exposed, buried. exposed, buried, partially buried and partially partially exposed right. So, we try to use various aspects even then the correlation is up to 0 0.4. That means, amino acid properties or secondary structure or thermal accessibility they could there are some limitations. So, they can get up to 0 0.5. So, on the other hand if you use a contact order or the long range order we can get up to 0 0.8 or multiple contact index right. This from this analysis what can we infer? We can see that uh, native state topology is very important and that is a major de determinant in the folding rates of these two state proteins ok. So, native state topology means this will tell you the folding type of a protein right. So, in this if, if so what are the different types of classes? Alpha, beta and mixture class that mixture class means containing both alpha and beta right. So, if you classify the proteins based on structures and then use these param, para properties then we include the some of the topological aspects. So, because for different classes or different folds. So, then we did that. So, in this case we see that all alpha proteins there are some specific parameters like the confirmation parameters are important in all alpha proteins. The all beta proteins mainly thermodynamic properties they influence the all beta proteins. The mixture proteins we could see that some physical chemical properties right they play an important role in the case of mixture proteins. So, if you classify the proteins into alpha, beta and mixture class then we could see that the, the correlation enhanced right very significantly right from, from the using all the data sets together. Now, how to relate right in this case we can we have the folding rate values and we use a multiple regression technique right we combine the, uh, the different values and then you can uh, relate to the folding rates. Now, the question is when you make the combinations there will be millions of combinations right. For example, if you have the 5 residue combination right your 2 residues means only 2 if you make more number of combinations right there will be lot of combinations. So, then how do you see whether any particular combination shows the highest performance. So, we did with the different combinations and see that this is the, uh, the frequency of combinations. Most of the combinations you can see this is very the performance is less right and here this is the average performance more than 25 percent about 25 percent in the case of albita here also you can see only for a particular combination it showed the highest value right in this case we could see one specific combination for example albita these are the properties and the for the case of the mixture class these are the properties to get the highest correlation. Okay, from that you can derive equations right for all alpha because less number of proteins so, it can be derived from just one pro property called alpha c helical contact area. All beta proteins they use 3 4 properties and the mixture class 1 2 3 4 properties. We use these equations right then you can uh, get the correlation of 0 0.9 for each of the classes 
and the deviation is also comparatively less and we checked with this the t test and the p value. So, the values are also statistically significant. Once it is done then we can uh, develop a program right. So, this is a relationship between experimental and predicted values. So, you can see the good correlation because you can see most of the uh, proteins right the values are on the 45 degree slope. So, now if we get this then we can make a server right. So, here it, it accepts the amino acid sequence single letter code and then here the important thing is we need to give the structure class. If you do not use a structure class if it is unknown then it can predict the folding rate, but in this case the performance is not so good and you can have some limitations if we use the unknown values. But if you know the structure class where it is all alpha or all beta all mixture class proteins then you can take the particular class and appropriately use the equation and this all alpha proteins and you can see this is 8.44 per second. If you look into these structures how many structures are known? the PDB only like, the, only like 30 thousand structures are known, but if we take the folding rates we know the folding rates only for about 100 proteins 100 plus proteins. So, many proteins we know the structures. So, in this case we know there is all alpha or all beta or the mixture class even with the known sequences right many sequences they have high sequence identity with the known structures. In this case you can get more number of sequences with known structure information if the structure information is known then you can use the server to predict this uh, folding rate even if the structure is not known right. So, you can uh, use the sequence information this is one section you can use the amino acid properties uh, combined together and you can uh, predict the folding rate. So, second aspect for example if you have a sequence like how to predict the folding rate. So, there is an indirect method to predict the folding rate using contacts because uh, we know that topological parameters are important right and these parameters explain well about the folding rates and the parameters are mainly depending on contacts and if we are able to get the contacts then we can convert these contacts into folding rates. So, this indirect methods uh, 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 they developed in 2005 right uh, Burkhard Rose from Columbia University proposed this one. So, what they did so first they get the sequence for the sequence they get the contacts how to get the contacts they use this amino acid sequence information for example, so take any of this residue for example, take this valine they have identified the residues which are close to valine right for example, this lesion three one in uh, lysine as well as on the right side towards N terminal and towards C terminal and they located the position of this valine based on secondary structure whether it is helix or strand or turn or coil and based on the solvent accessibility it is buried this is secondary structure and a solvent accessible surface area right buried or partially buried or exposed and they compare with the known structures then they see this valine is in contact with which type of what are other residues take any cutoff for example, 8 angstrom compare the experimental data right. So, they use this information and they use the model for predicting these contacts in this case they do not know the structure so, for any sequence they give the sequence information neighboring residues and secondary structure solvent accessibility as well as the conservations right we have discussed all the uh, score the parameters in the previous classes. So, take all the information to predict the contacts once the contacts are known can we predict the LRO? Yes, we can predict the LRO right because we see only we need the cutoff of 12 residues then you calculate the number of contacts residues with the cutoff of more than 12 residues. Once we get the LRO then we can get the folding rate right this is indirect method to predict the folding rate using predicted contacts ok here this is the server which can predict the contacts. So, here this is the amino acid sequence right you can take the amino acid sequence in single letter code. So, then they use all the other information they use the what are information they, uh, they use for the prediction secondary structure solvent accessibility and the neighboring residues and the central residue information conservation score 
So, they take all the information finally, they give you the output. If you see here, if you take this is the eight angstrom distance, this eight means eight angstrom and these are the residues 67 and 99 right 67 and 99 are in contact right with the probability of this is the probability of 0 0.95. So, they give the probability so you can take the uh, contacts with the high probability and if you get these contacts we can convert this information to get this long range order. For example, if you see 699 what is the distance separation? 33 right. So, you see i minus j 32 if you see this one 8. right if you see this one i minus j equal to 8. Right. So, you have all the contacts now the next next step is once you download the data we can get the i minus j and compute how many contacts are within the limit of 12 residues is very easy to do that. Now, the question is whether these contacts right are at least the residues with the separation of 12 residues right are related with the known uh, long range order. If you have known the structures we can get the long range order likewise they can do that. So, they did that for example, if they predicted the LRO and this is the, the LRO obtained directly from the structure and see the correlation. So, specifically if you see the small proteins right that they concern 199 proteins and the correlation is not bad is about 0 0.7. So, in this case if you predict the contacts and the predicted contacts help to get this long range order, but even with the correlation of about 0 0.7. Now, they converted this information into predicting the folding rate right. So, what they did? So, they used all the predicted LRO and use the same equation and to predict the folding rate. So, here the for a set of uh, proteins we give the folding rate right. So, here the correlation is 0 0.68 minus 0 0.68 with the deviation of 0 0.98. This outlier right this outlier mainly because it contains isolated bonds. So, it is not able to take into account. So, now if you exclude this outlier then the here the correlation is minus 0 0.78 with the deviation of 0 0.86. When you compare the data with the experimentally calculated the LRO that means, using known 3D structures if the results there is comparable is 78 this is 0 0.81. That means, if you know the sequence and if you do not know the structure indirectly you can calculate the long range order and eventually you can get the folding rate from this long range order right which can be predicted from the contacts. So, this is how they can do that. So, if you summarize right what are the various aspects we discussed today? Protein folding rate right what is uh, protein folding rate? It is a measure of how fast a slow your protein can fold from its amino acid sequence to its native three dimensional structure. So, what is the order of magnitude of these folding rates? Slow to four, uh, slow to fast may be in the microseconds to an hour. So, it also varies up to 8 orders of magnitude. So, if we compare with the all alpha proteins and all beta proteins right which are fast folders right all alpha proteins fold faster than all beta proteins right. Right if you can compare this information with the contacts if you compare the all alpha proteins and the all beta proteins which one have more number of long range contacts all beta, all beta proteins can long range contacts and also these contacts are influenced with which residues hydrophobic residues. The case of fast folders you can see mainly the medium and short range interactions and some of the polar residues are dominant. So, that is related with the folding rates right. Then we discussed about different topological parameters based on the 3D structures and contacts right. What are the different parameters we discussed? Contact order, long range order and the multiple contact index. So, if you see these uh, uh, indices all the indices right they showed good relation with the folding rates right about 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 right inverse relationship between any of these indices like contact order or long range order or multiple contact index with the folding rates. This will tell you the topological parameters are important for determining the folding rates right. Then we discussed whether the sequences or any properties 
can relate these folding rates right when you compare the sequence based information secondary structure and accessibility right as well as the topology parameters right we found the uh, difference among all these features the topological parameters could explain up to 0 0.8 but in the case of the other parameters like the properties or secondary structure or accessibility right up to 0 0.5 then we discussed about whether it is possible whether we can predict the folding rate from sequence right is it possible to predict the folding rate from sequence there are various methods available right so either you can uh, directly use the sequence or you can indirectly use the sequence to, to predict the folding rate how we directly predict the folding rate from sequence so we can use sophisticated chemical properties right because we derived various parameters right and i will discuss in the earlier classes so get the average values of the sophisticated properties and we can combine together at using linear regression we can predict the folding rates right the indirectly how can we predict contact and then predict the contact first contact information we convert it to the indices right for the example the contact order or long range order and use that information to predict the folding rate so that is fine so we have the standard equations we can predict the folding rates fine so we discussed the applications of sequence and structure based parameters on various aspects like structure prediction protein stability and the folding rates right in the subsequent classes we will see how these parameters can also be used to identify the binding sites in complexes for example protein protein or protein rna or protein dna or the protein ligand complexes and whether we are able to understand the recognition mechanism of how these complexes form and how to maintain this binding affinity and how these uh, parameters are useful in structure based drug design for example to identifying the lead compounds or potential inhibitors right for any specific targets addressing any specific uh, diseases then we will discuss about some of the uh, steps you have to follow to develop any of these applications right for your projects or anything right that we will discuss in the next uh, few classes thank you for your kind attention